Hi, my name's Alex Walford. I'm a systems engineer, and in this short video, I want to show you how you can use um, Neo4j in conjunction with Zeek, which is an IDS. So we've got Neo4j, a graph database, uh, and, and, and Zeek is an intrusion detection system. I want to show you how you, you can use those things together to understand what's going on in your network. Um, so this is what I've got running. I've got um, my, my Fortinet firewall. I have a span port set up. So this is copying anything across any of those um, ports is being, is being written out to my IDS. Um, the IDS is, is basically a protocol analyzer. It's um, looking at the packets going across and um, pulling out metadata for those and writing those into Kafka. So I have a Kafka topic. Well, there's lots of topics, right? So, so the one that I'm going to be using is, is called con. This has uh, connection details, um, the source and destination, IP addresses, um, the ports, uh, number of bytes being sent, that sort of thing. And, and so Neo4j um, has a Kafka connector um, which can consume that data and build a graph in real time. And then we're going to visualize that graph using something called uh, NeoViz. Um, which is a, a JavaScript library from Neo4j. And it, I think it's a bit better than the standard Neo4j browser because you can have a lot more uh, nodes uh, being displayed and, and you have a lot more control over, over how they're displayed. Um, so this is an example of uh, a Neo4j. Um, the, the, well, this is the statement that builds the graph, right? So um, the, the events are being passed in um, by the Kafka connector, and they're building the graph. And I've, I've color coded things to, so you can see how they relate to one another. Um, so in, in the, the very first line has, a, has um, something that grabs the origin IP. Um, so I, I take an event. That event has an attribute called ID orig H. H is for host. And I'm creating an object uh, called origin. And then I'm going to use that object later. Same goes for response, right? You'll see event.id has an attribute called id response underscore h. And that's the response object. And that third line is going to create a relationship between the two things. Now, I've given that relationship an alias uh, connected to. Um, and I'm going to use that alias to count uh, the number of connections that have that same um, origin and destination. Uh, so this is how I'm able to sort of count uh, you know, how, how many um, other records have that same uh, connection. Uh, and I'm also capturing some metadata here. So I'm capturing the number of bytes uh, from each uh, IP address. Uh, and, and I've got an incrementing uh, sort of a ro rolling sum of those. Um, so that's what the, the last two lines are there. Once I've got the data in Neo4j, there's a few cool things that I can do. One, one, one thing that I, I, I think is um, an interesting sort of slice of the network is the degree of centrality. So obviously, you know, your router or your, your, your gateway is going to have a lot of connections to it. Um, but if you saw a lot of connections um, to a host, could indicate um, like a port scan or something like that. It might not make sense, yeah, particularly if you saw lots of um, ports um, being accessed from a single host uh, you know, over a period of time. That might indicate like a, a stealthy uh, scan. And, and this would show up um, quite beautifully in the, in the graph. Um, there's also called a Louvain uh, community uh, detection algorithm that you can group similar things together. Now, this isn't going to work that great on, on my um, environment because this is this is a home environment and there are very two very few things that are similar in here but this would work great in a corporate network where you have desktop users that access certain things um, you could sort of group all those things together and then maybe the behavior of one one of those things that didn't fit into the community might might be kind of a, an anomaly uh, might be interesting worth, worth a second look um, so let's have a quick look and see how we set this up. Um, so what I've done, I've used the Neo4j uh, consumer here. And let's pop over to uh, my, uh, 
my uh, neo4j.conf file. So basically what I've done, look, I've got some properties here to tell it where Kafka is. And um, I've got that merge statement that we walked through a moment ago um, to build the graph. So this is going to build the graph uh, dynamically. Now Neo4j has uh, all kinds of um, plugins and things that extend the functionality. So this is my plugins folder. And the way these work, you typically drop a jar, a Java archive file, in the plugins folder, restart Neo4j, and then you get some new functionality. So in order to use Kafka Streams, look, I, I, I put the, the Neo4j streams jar in here. Um, I've also put the graph uh, algorithms jar in here. Um, so, so these are things that we're going to be using right now. OK, so let's take a quick look at the graph. Um, so um, I'm using NeoViz here. I'm just going to refresh this page, and then we can zoom in and take a peek. Um, it takes a moment because there's quite a few nodes to pull across the network. So you can see, like, this is a fairly busy node. Uh, this one here, what is it, 10.0.1.68, um, looks like it's been connecting to a bunch of machines on the internet. And so now I can pop over to my, my Fortinet firewall here and take a look and see what it is. And that is Miles's iPhone. Looks like he's been, uh, had a hard day on the iPhone there. Um, so, um, yeah, let's um, add um, community to this. So I'm going to run uh, the, um, the, there's a one liner that is going to create a community attribute to each of the nodes uh, and group similar things together. So let me copy this one liner. I'm going to pop over uh, to uh, the Neo4j browser. I'm going to run that. OK, so now let's refresh and, ha and have a look at the, uh, the graph. And uh, we'll just take a peek at one of the nodes. And may maybe I need to, uh, oh, look, no, no, it's all, all colorful now. So you can see that all of these things are sort of related. Uh, so yeah, so this, this is Miles' iPhone. I'm guessing this, this one here, uh, 69, 103 connections. Um, I think that's probably a, a PS4. Let's have a look. I think that was a PS4. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, the, the PS4. Very good. Um, so um, we, can, we can filter for a, um, traffic on a, on a particular you know, network. So I'm, I'm looking at you know, any, any uh, connection to a host that starts with 10.0.1. something here. And so this will sort of limit it to just what's on my own network. And uh, yeah, so th this is kind of interesting. This 10.0.1.61. This is Prometheus. This is uh, some monitoring. Creates a, a ton of uh, connections. Um, this, this thing here has a lot of uh, um, A lot of connections to it, 69. Oh yeah, we just said that was the PS4. Okay, 45. Yeah, what's 45? Yeah, that was kind of interesting to me. I have on my network, I've got, let me just move this up. I have, 45 is uh, an Alexa, I think. Yeah, look at this, it's an Amazon Alexa device. It's connecting to a ton of stuff on my network, probably my Sonos, not sure why. I think that's a very kind of, a very interesting thing, but and I'm sure that if you ran this on a corporate network, it would uh, be way more interesting than just my, my home network. But anyway, this is it. This is what I wanted to show you today. This is uh, Zeke. IDS, Intrusion Detection System, building a graph in Neo4j in real time, allowing you to see what's going on in your network. Thanks so much for watching.